Hi guys, it's Emily, just a wifey to a man that has a visual impairment that is blind. Um, I'm here today to talk about another kitchen gadget, the Ninja Foodie XL Pro Air Oven. Um, just talking about navigating it and um, how it's set up, so maybe this can give you some more independence using these devices on your own. Um, so if you have unboxed your uh, XL Pro Ninja thing, um, the handle will open up to the front and the top. Do make sure that uh, you check that you get all the plastic. So there were some pieces that were actually like on the glass front of the device. And then they do have multiple different racks inside. So there is a wire rack that, um, you know, it's a wire rack, it's rectangular, and there's like thin bars going across. Um, that one's used for most of the cooking options. It also came with um, a broil tray or roast tray where um, it's got the grooves, the kind of hills, and feels like there's slits going down across the bottom. Um, when I read the directions, I haven't roasted anything yet, to, to be honest, but it did say that you're going to want to keep that tray inside. Oops, sorry if that's like ringing into the video. Inside of a sheet pan when you do whole roast, air roast, or air fry. So do keep that um, ridged roast pan inside something when you're cooking with it. Um, I did want to go through what all of those fancy racks that you got were for. So far, me and my husband have cooked a pizza and we air fried some chicken fillets. So I haven't done too much with it, but very excited to do more. Um, the air fry grow basket, um, it, it is just like what it sounds. Um, it is a basket and it's got... The webbing, the groove kind of feels like a colander or like a strainer. Um, that's what you'll use for like air frying a lot. And then um, it comes with multiple racks. Uh, on Oh, and a like drop tray. So there's this flat um, metal piece. It's going to be on the bottom of the device when it comes in the machine, gadget. I don't know. Um, it's flat and smooth it's got a lip on the front um and it's just a flat like aluminum piece so it just slides in and out the bottom um we have to clean ours it's pretty gross right now <laughs> but um i did want to just kind of go through some of the pieces here um so the like receiving the flat tray that kind of catches all the droppings from what you cook um will stay on the bottom bottom part um so if you are facing your device with the handle on in front of you um, using your left hand if you uh, open it and then you go to the inside on the left hand side um, starting with the bottom if you have the tray still in there you'll feel the receiving tray um, if you move your hand along the inside of the uh, machine you'll notice there's some bumps like if you go up from the bottom to the top of the machine um, those bumps, that's how it indicates each level. When you use this device, they tell you you're going to heat on level three or level four, or level two, whatever it is. Um, so the first one, um, there's should be one, two, three, four grooves of four separations um, between each of those bumps. Um, that's where it's going to hang the different racks. If you feel that there's five, you probably counted like the lowest part that's an opening. Um, just go past that. So <laughs> the opening where we have the catching tray, go up one. If you feel an opening, that's where level one is to push in trays. Then um, you go up the split again is where you would slide in level two, up again level three, and up to level four. That's um, how you're sliding them in. There's four grooves there. Um, so if it's easier to you from feel from bottom to top or top to bottom either way But that is just how that works how they put in the different devices or the different trays um, So I'm gonna close mine now and we're gonna talk about the buttons on the front um, This is where I think like creating more independence is helpful So many things are moving to this beautiful little like oh touch screen and digital panel but like you can't feel the difference between temperature and time when it's just a screen. Uh, so I'll try to help along with that. So if you've closed your oven, um, and I guess starting with 
your left hand. If you move it around the outside, the front of the handle, you're gonna come across a button. Um, it's a circular button. Um, you'll feel it's a little different. If you push that, that's on and off for the whole oven. That's the on off button on your left hand side. And then um, if you keep moving your hand across, there's gonna be a very smooth screen. That's actually where the light up of the a screen and the temperature and time, everything shows um, there. You'll come across to more on the right hand side. Um, you're gonna come to two buttons. They're actually in a column, one above the other. Um, there's actually gonna be a set of four columns of buttons. Um, and then there's gonna be one singular button on the right hand side of the handle. So once again, we're talking about the handle on the front of the oven. Um, on your right hand side, if you go from the right and move your hand across the front of the handle, you're gonna hit a button, that's your start stop, and then you're gonna go across these four columns of buttons, there's two buttons in each column, and so forth. So whichever way, if you're more left hand or right hand or whatever makes it easier, um, I am going to be talking about going from left to right. So if you move your, you take your hand, left hand on the side of the handle, um, move it across, you'll first hit the power button, and then if you slide it across, you're gonna come to a first set of column of um, buttons, one on top of the other. That um, first top button is gonna be saying level two button, and then the button below it is the light button. So if you turn the light button, it turns on the light in the oven, awesome. Um, if you turn that off, then if you uh, push the level two button, um, that's actually changing the rack level. So for each of the directions and different settings on here, they have different recommended rack levels that they'll cook at. Um, and from what I've read in the directions, whatever rack level is heated up or lit up, that's the one that is gonna be in use. So you wanna make sure that you push your button um, push the rack level button to differentiate um, or you know you can kind of wing it and go rogue and just see what happens with your food if you want but just so you know that first set of column the top button is going to be level two the bottom button is the light button so top is level two button bottom is the light button the next column going from left to right is the function button the function button the top one is positive or going up and the bottom one is negative or it's function down. Um, on the screen, the functions are whole roast, air roast, air fry, bake, dehydrate, broil, toast, bagel, pizza, reheat. That's the order of the functions. So when I first um, opened up and started our oven, it started on whole roast, um, but when I've opened it today or turned it on today, it's defaulted on air fry. So that's one thing I will say, um, depending on what are you last used, I'm wondering if that's how the machine defaults to it. Um, so do be cautious of that, because I know it's easier, like, hey, if I always know what it starts at, I can move it down. Um, but I have noticed that ours will go back to whatever we previously cooked on. So if we previously cooked on air fry, it's starting back on air fry. So keep that in mind. But um, if we're to go through, oh, I'll, I'll keep talking about the buttons and then I'll go through the settings, like the time and temp for each of the functions. But so going left to right, our first column of buttons was level two in the light. Our second column of buttons was function up, function down. Our third column of buttons, the top button is, it's for time. So it's a plus sign for time. So time increase on the top and time a negative sign for time, so time decrease on the bottom. Uh, the fourth column of buttons is temperature, so temperature up um, on the top and temperature down minus on the bottom. So that's all the buttons on the front. Oh, and then the, the last button you'll come across, there's like a singular button, that is your start stop. So to turn it, start it, to stop it. So from left to right, you'll have the power button, uh, then the level two light column, the function column, the time column, and the temp column, and then ends with start stop. So I'm gonna go through what um, the default temperature and time is for each of the functions and the rack level, so you know, hey, this is where we're starting at, now I know do I go 
up by five here, down by five, um, because that's how most of the temperatures are. They or that's how all of them are <laughs> that I've seen. Um, they all increase and decrease by five. So just wanted to let you know about that. So I'm gonna replug this in because I don't want to mess it up. All right. So if we turn on our um, air fryer or our I'm sorry, it's called the Ninja XL Pro Air Oven. <laughs> I just keep calling it the air fryer. Um, but we turn on our oven. If we go to whole roast, which is the top function, it um, will default to 45 minutes at 375 degrees at rack level one. So on the inside, you would set up your racks on that first groove on rack level one. So one is at the bottom, rack level four is at the top. So that is for whole roast. For air roast, it's 30 minutes at 375 degrees set on rack level three. So you would put your roasting pan on level three. It's defaulting to 30 minutes at 375. You can adjust using your time and temp buttons to go up or down with that. The next function is air fry. Air fry defaults to 20 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit on rack level three. So bake, that defaults to 20 minutes at 350 degrees on rack level three. Dehydrate, that defaults to six minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit on rack level three. Broil, that defaults to five minutes on high. I'm not sure exactly what high is. Um, it just says high low. Um, you broilers out there probably know, like, hey, that's the standard, that's expected. Um, amateur chef here, just really trying to help you guys with the machine. <laughs> okay, if we go to the next function, which is toast, toast is unique. Um, along with bagel, they do slices and shades. So for default for toasting, um, it defaults to four slices at shade three at rack level three. Um, and to change how many slices you're going to put in there or what shade you want them to come out, um, slices, you're going to go to your time column and you can go positive. So you can go up and you can go up to uh, five slices, six slices, seven slices. I think it maxes out at nine slices. Like if you keep pushing, it's not going to go anymore. Um, and then for shade, the shades will go all the way up to seven, and that's the highest shade for toast. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're wanting to change for toasting, for slices or shades, um, you would use the time buttons, the time column for slices, and use the temp column for shade. All right, next function is bagel. Bagel defaults to two slices, and then it goes up to a shade four, or it starts at a shade four. So if you want something different than two slices at a shade four, once again, you're just gonna click the up button. I think that one ends at nine, and shade seven is also the max there. So just so you know. Uh, pizza defaults to 15 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit on rack level three. I think these are all on like rack levels. Um, in the booklet, they do give you different instructions like, oh, you should change this to two level. Like that, col that first column of buttons I described where it's got the light bulb on the bottom and level two on the top. Um, the level two button is when you're like changing what rack level you're keeping or you're cooking at. Um, in the booklet, they did specify times when you would want to change that rack level. Um, I just didn't, uh, like I haven't read through all of the different ones. I can definitely do that. I can read through um, those different instructions and talk through how to cook something specific if anyone has requests. But as of right now, I'm just telling you um, how their default set it. All right. And then the next one is reheat. So for reheat, um, it defaults to 10 minutes at 250 degrees at rack level three. Um, and so that is all the functions. If you kept clicking down for function, it's just going to pop back up to whole roast. So when you click the function buttons, it just keeps cycling through. It doesn't stop, just so you guys know. Um, but once you pick whichever um, cooking style you want to do and you have your time and temps set, then you'll click start and stop. Um, I did want to let you know as far as the preheat's concerned, 
Um, the booklet says that um, dehydrate, broil, bagel, and reheat, and toast. Um, they do not have a preheat mode. So if you're going to be cooking in any of those, you're just going to want to put your food in first and then just click start stop because they don't do any preheating. Um, I did notice, we noticed when we did air frying that there's preheating for a very short period of time, maybe a couple of minutes, and then it beeped and then immediately started counting down in our time. So when you hear that beep, just know it automatically jumps into like cooking mode. It doesn't, um, you know, wait for you to put stuff in and then start it again. So um, just be around your oven um, and then listen for the beep. It does beep, so that's good. Let you know to differentiate that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, the oils. So they did say that they recommend you use oils with a high smoke point, like canola oil, avocado, vegetable, grapeseed oil, instead of olive oil or so forth, um, just because they send like burning and so forth. We haven't used oils necessarily. We just cooked the pizza, cooked the chicken. It turned out great. Um, the first time we cooked in there, it did have like a little bit of a new machine odor um, smell, which the food wasn't bad. It was just like when it was cooking, it smelled like that. So if you feel like you're getting a weird smell, um, I mean, if it's really bad, maybe stop it. But don't freak out too much because I think that might just be like, or maybe we just didn't clean it good enough before cooking our first thing. But um, just know that there is that new smell when you first cook it. But other than that, um, feel free to let me know if you have any questions about this uh, ninja foodie. Um, I would love to help. I'm hoping that my explanations were a little bit more helpful and accessible. And if not, I can go through some different things and try and provide different resources. But just here to help. Um, I love helping the uh, visually impaired community. So talk to you later, guys.